Welcome back to The Woo. I'm your host, DJ, aka Fresh Prince of The Woo, and welcome to New Woo Sessions, where we invite guests from different corners of the Vegas cannabis industry, and we sit down to share a VIP table package in Nevada's very first cannabis consumption lounge, only here in the Vegas Tasting Room. Come check us out. On today's episode, we are featuring the infamous, the fanatical, Green Life Productions, aka GLP, and their very own CEO, Steve Cantwell, former MMA pro fighter turned to an organic cannabis cultivator. Steve, how you doing, brother? Doing good, how you doing, brother? Doing well, man, I appreciate you coming back. No worries, Welcome back. It. Yeah, so um, on today's episode, we just wanted to dive into a little bit of who you are, your company, and then um, because you have that MMA background, of course, jump into some athletics as well. Who is Steve Cantwell prior to MMA? Like, who is the core? of uh, Steve Cantwell. So, uh, yeah, I started off, um, you know, as a teenager, kind of a troubled youth in a small town, getting in trouble. My parents removed me from school. Well, I was kicked out of school. Right. And, and uh, they put me into to live at One Kick's gym, uh, nice. which was like an infamous uh, MMA kickboxing gym here in Las Vegas, like yes, one sir. of the first uh, kickboxing gyms in Las Vegas. Um, and I lived there for about three years, just learning, breathing, uh, in nothing but fighting. Nice. Um, MMA, jiu-jitsu, uh, mixed martial arts, just in general. Um, so then, yeah, for, so from there, I got kicked out of high school, moved to one-kick gym, uh, became a pro athlete. Um, I took that dream pretty far, um, started to endure all kinds of injuries over time. Sure. And that's what kind of brought me full circle um, back gotcha. into cannabis. So. For sure, for sure. I mean, growing up, especially being a troubled youth, you grew up in seeing how cannabis was criminalized for majority of your life. Um, where do you see cannabis in the next 10 years? I mean, I definitely see it being federally legal in the next 10 years, um, which I think is like a double-edged sword. I think it's gonna help with obviously a lot of the, the obvious issues like banking uh, and things of that nature. Um, but I also think it's also gonna open the floodgate for, for corporate cannabis um, yeah. more so than ever too. So um, I'm kind of enjoying the not uh, federally legal side of it as for far sure. as the flood that's gonna take place. Um, but it, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be federally legal and hopefully more accepted across all platforms. Yeah, 100%. My people in Hawaii, they could definitely use it out there. For sure. uh, do you ever mix sports and cannabis or do you just keep the two separated? Uh, when I was a professional athlete, I kept them as separated as possible as far gotcha. as during a training camp. Um, and we'll dive into that more later, I'm sure. Um, but now as a retired athlete, right. um, it's definitely part of my workouts and my pre-workouts, um, 100%. For sure. More for like recovery or do you ever use it prior to your workouts or anything Yes, like I use yeah. it prior to my workouts, especially if I'm kickboxing or doing some jiu-jitsu. Uh, I like to get lit because the way I see it, I'm training for more of like a street scenario. Right, I'm 100%. Not professional anymore. Right. If I'm in the street and I get in some trouble, I'm most likely going to be lit yeah. and, and, you know, stoned. So I want to train stone because that's how I'm going to you know, use my martial arts. For sure. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, did you have any positive influences that might have motivated you to get into the cannabis game? I mean, more family and friends. That, I mean, people kind of kept it uh, more you know underground back then there wasn't a whole lot of people this is before instagram and all that stuff right, too, so sure. there wasn't a whole lot of people to really follow to look for inspiration back then um so i would just say more family and friends who are doing it on a smaller scale at home that's cool. like i had an uncle has some friends and stuff and i always looked up to them so it was cool that's what's up uh i've read that you were originally part of uh nevada's medical marijuana program what got you into starting the patient program so i started off as a as a medical marijuana patient um i was reintroduced to cannabis uh, after my fight career kind of started coming to an end due to a lot of injuries and, and fighting and training through injuries. Um, I had a lot of chronic issues that weren't going away. Um, doctors were, were just throwing pain pills at me as, yeah. as this quick solution that, and I didn't really see an ending to it. So I kind of got reintroduced to cannabis and I kind of looked at it as like a more sustainable way to manage my, uh, my pain. Right. Um, it, was, it was a cleaner, more sustainable way that I could do that. So um, I kind of made that transition. Um, I don't take pain pills, I don't do any of that stuff. I just, if I have any issues, I know I have the strain that can really help me get through it now. For sure. Um, so the medical marijuana program taught me a lot. Um, I really, after I got out of fighting, all I did was grow weed at home for like, nice. you know, five years hey. um, prior to starting GLP. My wife made that possible, so I'm thankful for her. Um, but yeah, just basically, it's just, uh, it was a really cool opportunity I had. Hell yeah. Um, so in, in athletics, I, I grew up in sports, not, not as far as you went, but uh, you always taught like, to have a clean athlete's mindset, like your body is a temple. Did any of that come into um, 
into your mindset when you started growing organically? Uh, yes, 100% actually. Uh, so like the UFC, they're very strict, especially back when I was fighting for them. Uh, like we had to list all our supplements just in case we popped for something that we didn't know was illegal, you know. Right. So we would always track all our supplements and always try to make sure that, you know, we weren't going to get busted with taking something we shouldn't have been. Um, so I had that mindset going into cannabis cultivation and I remember um, when I had this heart-to-heart -heart talk with my coach, I was like, hey, oh, coach, um, I'm smoking cannabis now as, a, as for, for pain management. And, uh, you know, it's not a drug, it's natural, this, that, and the other thing. And my coach kind of hit me with this, like, really simple thing. He was like, well, do you use chemicals to grow your cannabis? I'm like, well, well yes, yeah, sir, they're, they're nutrients. He's like, well, drug, uh, drug dealers and drug makers use chemicals to make drugs. Right, um, right. So you're still smoking drugs. Right. Uh, and it's it, it, simple as it, 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 that kind of sounds, and in a kind of dumb way, I was like, wow, that actually made sense. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, sure. like, right, so then I kind of started looking more to nature. I was like, well, nature doesn't use chemicals. Nature doesn't use synthetics. So how does nature grow medicine? Um, and that's what kind of put me on my, my path to, to growing the most natural cannabis I can in an indoor environment. For sure, because it's kind of crazy out here in the desert. Exactly. Um, but let's get into uh, about GLP. Green Life Production is probably one of the most famous brands out there here on the Nevada market. Um, could you describe your role for GLP? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, I, mean, I started off uh, as, you know, uh, the. I was the vision behind GLP as far as you know, I kind of designed what we were going to do in my home garden and then we just put it to scale. Um, I started off more on just the grow side, training the whole grow team to trim team, the whole out everything, um, branding, uh, marketing, all that stuff is, is, is split between me and my wife. So I run the back of the house, the, the growing um, for the most part and the branding. Gotcha. And then my wife helps me get everything done as far as branding goes and ordering goes. And then we share the middle of the trim room because she handles sales and compliance. Uh, so I handle the back of the house, we share the trim room, and then uh, a lot of branding. And, uh, so all the, all the branding you see as far as jar designs, um, ads, all that stuff. Your hieroglyphics? Uh, the hieroglyphics. I literally drew this on graph paper. And our what? Artist, uh, I was actually very strict with what I wanted with this one. That's pretty much exactly what I drew and sent to our artist. Man, that's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah, so that's amazing. Uh, I just geek out and have fun with it, you know, just kind of... I, I just do what I like, man. Sometimes it works, and For not sure. always. You know? Yeah, you know, you got to keep throwing it to the sticks. Um, Hey. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So we got the two package for you guys. And here we have Eliazar. Eliazar, would you mind describing VIP package to the folks at home? 100%. So we have a bong and pipes that come with your package that you get to take home. Trays, grinders, papers, lighters, you name it. And then we also have the Mac uh, from GLP, a personal favorite of mine. Yes. Really good for the day. And then we also have a black triangle and the baby J's. You guys enjoy? You want me to crack any of these open for you? I got it. Thank you, brother. Sure. Appreciate yeah, you. I appreciate you, brother. You. Easy. All right, man. Well, let's jump into this. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that black triangle. I got, I got shit to do today. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is also a snack tray that is also available here at the Vegas Station Room. Comes with drinks, snack, uh, candies, chips, you name it. We also have liquid marijuana for you, sir. Thank you. That's thank delicious. You. And I got a strawberry. Easy, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. You can't deny how beautiful this looks, either. All right, brother. So, uh, were there any complications when uh, you started GLP? Obviously, <laughs> right? All of them. Yeah, <laughs> all of them. Uh, from the floors to the roof to <laughs> to electronics to yeah. to ownership to to regulations. I mean, we basically battled it out with on every single level and. I mean, it's just what made us strong because it made us who we are today, you know? Um, sure. Those trials and errors um, really define who we are and the ability to get past them gives us the confidence to continue moving forward in this industry that's ever changing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at some time we've really, we battled out just about everything from employees to ACs to soil to, to air. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all been a learning curve for sure. So, man, you really drove that uh, athlete's mindset into the into the business as well. No quitting your game, huh? I mean, I, I can't help it. It's just right. you know, it's part of who I am. You know? For sure, 100%. Um, how many dispensaries is GOP currently in? Do as much as there? we can be. Right. Uh, we're, we're relatively small. I know we have a big presence um, and we may be big compared to some smaller operations, but we're only at 12,000 square foot grow um, with about 7,000 square foot of canopy. Wow. Um, so we're relatively small for, for the, the presence we have online. Um, so we try to take care of as many dispensaries we can. We try to 
take care of the ones who take care of us first, and right. then we offer it out to our leftovers to some of the other ones out there. For sure. Um, you guys are definitely first on our list because you guys have been good to us for, hey, for a long we time. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Actually, I'm gonna crack open one of these like, triangles if you don't mind better. Yeah, that's all you, bro. <laughs> Yeah, these baby J's available here at New Cannabis Marketplace. Make sure you guys come and pick up this and the Mac. Mac Guarantee is probably one of my favorite strains. Yeah, I hate to, because you know, this is a really hyped up strain at one time, and I hate to follow the hype. Um, I always try to like lean away from hype, but I love Mac, dude. It's one yeah. of my favorite strains to grow, one my, always one of my favorite strains to smoke. Um, it, it definitely lives up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. And the baby J's are great, especially for COVID and stuff, man. You don't gotta share them. I don't share baby J's, that's my thing. Same. Uh, so you have your Same. own little pull. You don't gotta worry about the awkwardness of passing a joint to somebody, so. Especially now in COVID days. Yeah, especially with the COVID days, I man. Grab one of these, brother. Ashtray effect. Oh, man, good times. Uh, so, do you have a favorite strand that you guys grow? Um, you know, I lean, like back when I had my patient garden, I was really into like super sativas, like, you know, 12 weeks plus. Um, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense uh, to do that in a highly regulated state. You're really growing a strain for 12 weeks versus eight or nine weeks doesn't pay me more money, but I still got to put more time and energy into it. So I really can't justify 12 weekers anymore. Um, so I try to focus on early finishing sativas. That's what I like. Right, for sure. Same. Um, I like the Mac for, for that reason. She's a, she's a hybrid, but she kind of leans more towards sativa effects mm -hmm. as far as energetic. I'm um, not so couch lock. Um, but yeah, I lean more to sativas. Again, Mac is a, one of my top favorite ones. Um, strawberry cough, which we ain't grown in a minute. Uh, I, I love me some strawberry cough. One of the best. Yeah, I'm a sativa dog myself. I like the euphoria, more higher energy. It might be the athlete's mindset. Yep, 100%. Uh, are there any new goals that you would like to accomplish with GLP? You know, uh, we have a lot of goals. Uh, we're, we're still just barely getting started at the end of the day. I know we've been for up sure. and going for about a little over six years now, uh, but we're still in, you know, the, the the very the very start of this where compared to where it's going to be going um, ultimately I would like to finish what I've started here in Nevada and fully build out my property really dial in our system it's all been a cookie cutter model that I can spread other places so I'd like to dial in Nevada and I would hope to get in a couple other states um, within the next couple of years and really take this you know nationally more so um, than just Nevada right so currently you're exclusively here in Las Vegas or uh, Nevada Nevada yes gotcha. sir. for sure nice well hopefully coming to you soon out of state um, I wanted to jump into athletics and, uh, and cannabis. I'm a huge MMA fan, of course, with your background. So first off, the robot. Strong, strong MMA nickname. Every, every fighter, every wrestler has to have a good nickname. Where did the robot come from? All right, it's kind of a long story. So when I first started sparring early in my in mixed martial arts um, uh, career, uh, I sparred my buddy Adrian, and was, I think it's his first time sparring too. And uh, we were just like basically, punch each other and uh, Jay Heron and Phil Baroni, oh, two guys wow. with thick New York accents, and we're sitting there with my coach one kick and they're like, oh, these guys are fucking robots. And they, they, and they sound, said it and it sounded kind of cool um, with that New York accent. Right. So my coach would always kind of call me the robot. Then, remind it forward a little bit, after a couple years, I'm, I'm signing for WEC, just signed for WEC. Nice. Um, WEC, I'm backstage, signing all my paperwork uh, the, the, uh, during fight week. And uh, one of the people uh, for the promotion that runs the show asked me, he's like, hey, what's your fight name? And uh, me at that time, I'm like, I don't got fighting, no fighting, you know, I just kept walking. And my coach came up behind me and he told him, yo, it's fighting, his robot. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. So then I'm in the cage for, uh, for my first WC fight, my first televised fight. And uh, they announced me, Steve the Robot Cantwell. I just looked up at my coach, and it stuck. Uh, <laughs> That's so. hilarious. Hey, that's a good story, though. That's a good origin story. Um, I got to ask this. Were you part of the WEC um, buyout from UFC? Were you part of that move? Uh, is that where you originated from? I signed up, I mean, I, I signed with WC um, shortly after that. Oh, okay. I think they might have had like one fight, um, one show before I signed with them where they were Zufa. Right. So like my first time with WC, I was signing all UFC documents. It was pretty cool. What? That's um, crazy. I was like 19 years old. It was, it was a trip. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Um, athletes are all about routines and schedules. Did you include cannabis into your daily schedule while you were an active pro fighter at all? <coughs> Obviously not in, in fight camp, but... Um, not really, man. Uh, I really would only use um, cannabis after fights, okay. um, where I, I would be chilling out for a week or two, kind of coming down from the recovering from what just took place. For sure. Um, I, would use, I would use cannabis then, more to supplement not uh, for alcohol, because I didn't want to really drink, because yeah. alcohol really took a toll on my body. I couldn't really train as well the next week. 
Um, so I really only use it for, for post-fight recovery. Um, that was it. I, cool. I couldn't really um, use it during training. I also lived in the gym, so I, wouldn't, I, was, I had nowhere to smoke. Right. Um, you know, I can't yeah, be smoking yeah. out the gym. My coach would kick my ass. 100%. 100%. Um, what, did, what are your thoughts on cannabis testing for uh, athletes? I mean, it, it, like example, um, if the UFC is cool with it and right. everybody, and it's across all platforms, yeah, that's cool. But like example, the Olympics. Yeah. Um, uh, I, if it's part of, the, if you got piss clean, you know that piss clean. I um, mean, it's just part of it's part of the role. You know, yeah. you got some countries where you still get your damn head cut off for smoking weed. Yeah, one hundred percent. Type shit. So I understand that at an Olympic level. Um, while it's not quite accepted yet, and I'm not saying I agree with it, I'm just saying I understand it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, uh, athletes should respect it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think hopefully in the future we can change that across, you know, all countries across the board, across sure. the world. Um, and at that time, yeah, I think we, if, to each their own. Yeah. yeah. True. Very true. Um, you were part of a special time uh, for during MMA. Who are some of your biggest heroes in that world? Right now? Yeah, uh, and right now, or even in the past. In the past, yeah. I mean, I grew up as a Chuck Liddell fan. Nice. Uh, that was my dude growing up. Um, did as you far have a mohawk? Was that? Did you have a mohawk? No, I, I did for <laughs> one time, but not, not in the market. It was, a, it was more of a church thing. Oh, we got to uh, see that picture now. But anyways, um, I would say nowadays, I would say uh, I really look up to people like uh, George St. Pierre. For um, sure. I think he's an all-around um, great athlete. I consider him a GOAT for sure. Um, I think John Jones, even though me and him were in, the, were in the same division one time, I really look up to him, what he's been able to do with his career. I know he's had his ups and downs, mm -hmm. but overall, I think he's a tremendous athlete. Same. I think Khabib, uh, from like a father-son perspective, is, yes. is, is, is a GOAT as well. Um, so I look model. up to a lot of athletes still, um, overall. For know? sure. And then they're all they're vastly different. I look up to them for the, their own reasons and their own uh, areas. You know? So you named a lot of wrestlers. Are you a wrestling background? No. Oh, no. okay. I, I was actually always more of like an anti-wrestler. So what? I was more kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. Not to say I never wrestled or don't respect it. For sure. Um, I just didn't wrestle in high school because I got kicked out by then. Right. Um, so I never really had the opportunity to take wrestling to the next level. Like a lot of these good wrestlers, I mean, they wrestled from like, you know, mm. since they were little kids all through school. They wrestling all know each bears. other. Uh, like Russian bears, some of them. Uh, but me, yeah, no, nah, I wasn't part of that. I wasn't cut from that cloth, unfortunately. Right. I got but my you. son will wrestle. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's what I hope, too. My, my son's a little lazy. He likes Paw Patrol. We'll see. We'll <laughs> figure it out. Um, MMA, good. much like cannabis, has a negative annotation. Um, as someone involved in both worlds, what is your opinion? If football players were, have been suspended to now athletes are being sponsored by, and, and college are being sponsored by other vendors as well. How do you feel that the cannabis industry will grow in the athletes' world? You know, uh, we'll see. I, right. I, I think once we get more understanding of the cannabinoid system and all the cannabinoids that are out there, um, once we can take, because like example, when it was medical, everything was all about terpenes right. and the effects. And then when recreational, everybody just forgot about that. Now it's all back to getting just stoned. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like once we put some more science and some more focus onto the medicinal, medicinal side of cannabis, uh, I think then uh, we can really start to see athletes kind of take a better, um, uh, a better step forward with it. For sure. Uh, right now, again, the focus is on we'd get you stoned again, yeah. and that's not really a good look for no, professional athletes. Not so at all. again, if we can put some science into it, find out you know what exactly it is that benefits us, whether it's THCV, CBD, uh, THC, whatever, mm -hmm. and, and how and why, um, then I think we'll we'll be all right. All right, one hundred percent. All right, so you got Nick Diaz, Nick and Nate Diaz. Sugar Sean O'Malley, Tyron Woodley, Mike Tyson. All big names that are both in MMA and cannabis. Uh, who would be your favorite cannabis friendly athlete? Well, Mike Tyson, of course. Mike Tyson, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, Mike, I mean, Mike, pretty much he's definitely on top of my list no matter what we're, the division we're in. Mike <laughs> sure. Tyson's the man, dude. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, no, I just respect Mike, dude. He, he's lived a, a hell of a life, dude. Um, he's had some crazy ups and downs. Man. He, he's, he's managed like a champion to, to, to maintain and he's back on top as far as his life goes. He's, yeah. he's, he looks like he's happy and successful right now. Um, he's got so that I, podcast I like Mike, going. Man. Yeah, I, I remember my first uh, Halloween costume as a little kid. Um, I was Mike Tyson. What? And uh, I'll never forget the looks when people asked me who I was. And I told them Mike Tyson, a skinny little white kid. It was, uh, it was kind of funny, dude. Was, <laughs> I wanted to be David Tua, but then I came out with the haircut. They thought I was kid in play, so I didn't. I was good. <laughs> um, let's see. Any advice or words of wisdom to active athletes that want to dive into cannabis? You know, this is going to be a little different than what you would expect me to say, but I would say stay away from it as much as possible. Um, cannabis makes you comfortable. There's no doubt about yeah. that. You know, whether you're stoned or not, you, you, cannabis 
eases stress and makes you comfortable. But as an upcoming athlete, you need that discomfort. You, the only way you're, you're going to grow is from that discomfort. You're going to you know, constantly be reaching. You're not going to be sitting down comfortable. You're going to be working out, trying to get better or achieve whatever it is that you're going to achieve. True. Like as a contender that, that is inspiring to be champion, you should never be comfortable as a contender and we don't make you comfortable. Uh, you shouldn't be comfortable until you become a champion. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I, I would say stay away from it as much as possible. That's not to say that, you know, if you take an injury or sustain something bad that we can't benefit you, but I would definitely take a more medicinal approach and, sure. and, and don't use it just to get stoned and deal with stresses and, and, and things like that. Um, at the end of the day, we have everything we need. Um, you really don't need cannabis. It helps, yes, but as an athlete, you really don't need it. Right. Um, unless, you know, something crazy happens. But for the most part, yeah, I would say Use it wisely, and, or, and, and for the most part, try to stay away from it. Unless if you're a young athlete, now an upcoming athlete, now if you're an right. old athlete or a retired athlete, it is absolutely great. Um, right. It's gonna help you um, stay clean as far as you know, take less opiates and, and other uh, horrible things that manage pain. It can help you mm. sleep, so you don't have to take anti-sleep medications. Yeah. Um, it can really help so many aspects, especially for the older athletes that have already kind of reached their goals, that are kind of finishing their careers, right. or maybe sustained years of, of damage, whether it's injuries or brain damage or whatever. Uh, I definitely recommend it for, for, for those. For sure, for sure. Great words of wisdom. Um, we did have one more segment. Um, it's just a bunch of random questions. We didn't show you yet, but it, it's just a pick we're and good. choose type of thing. It's uh, called Off the Rip. Uh, we're going to give our guest uh, a questionnaire. It's going to be a two choice question, uh, rapid style. Uh, so, number one, sativa or indica? Sativa. Two, flower or wax? Flower. Three, Joe Rogan or Seth Rogan? Joe Rogan. Nice. Four, half baked or pineapple express? Half baked. Nice. Five, Pre-fight jitters or pre-harvest jitters? Pre-fight jitters. Nice. Six, submission or knockout? Ooh. Uh, that's a tough one. I'd say knockout. For sure. For sure. Number seven, Fremont Street or The Strip? Fremont Street. For sure. Eight, group sesh or solo sesh? Uh, group sesh. Number nine, Wilder or Fury? Ooh. I would say Fury. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I do too, but I like Wilder. No, no offense. I like him. I like him, but the, the, I don't like his, the way he handled the last loss. Yeah, well. no, yeah, same. That's all. My only Very difficulty. true. Very true. Number 10, Volkanovski or Ortega? I'll go with Ortega. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. Well, Steve, I appreciate you for coming on again, man. Uh, we learned a lot here about GOP, and especially from you, man. I, I've grown into a bigger fan just even doing your research, and I love the nickname The Robot. <laughs> I hope that you come on again. Thank you again, brother. I appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. And this is New Sessions. We out of here. I'm an MMA fighter, though. At least that I've noticed. Yeah. All short yeah. shorts and flip flops, just like rugby players. I'm definitely <laughs> more comfortable with flip flops for sure. Right. <laughs> oh, let me turn. All right. Wait till that door starts. I know, right? <laughs> it's opening, so it's gonna close. Yeah.